everyone, and welcome back to Faith and Flower. This is Robin. I hope you're having a great week. As you may know, we got back from vacation this past week, so things have been a little nutty and I've been trying to get on top of things, especially in the kitchen. I've got some great meal prep ideas for you from a new cookbook that I am loving. But before that, I'm putting in a grocery order and I did that at the beginning of the week. I don't always get my groceries all at one place. <laughs> I like to shop our local grocery store, which is HEB, and then fill in at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. I just never seem to find everything that I want in one place. But I did put in an online order, which makes my life so much easier. It's completely free here, so I can select everything that I want to on my computer, which makes meal planning a breeze. And then a couple days later, I can pick it up at the store. And before the groceries arrive, it's the perfect time to clean out the refrigerator and get everything organized so I can load it up and it's all nice and clean. I think the whole family's pretty good about wiping up spills when they happen, but inevitably there are always little sticky areas and I like keeping on top of that because that way it doesn't become a big project when it's time to clean out the refrigerator. And doing it often helps me to know what we have in stock so I don't rebuy things that we already have. I can also spot things that are going bad and get them out of there quickly and use things so that we don't let things go to waste as much as possible. I just grab a microfiber cloth, dampen it with some water, and that does the trick. It's super easy, and I really like taking things out shelf by shelf, starting at the top and working my way down. E-Cloth is my favorite brand of microfiber cloths, and I just use one of their general purpose cloths and then follow it with their window and polishing cloth on the glass shelves, and that gets them sparkling clean. And then for all of the condiments, I like to use these plastic bins, and the ones that I have are in my Amazon store, and you can find the link for that down in the description box. There are several reasons why I love these. <laughs> so right now I'm taking all of the condiments out and wiping them down so that if there are any drips on the bottles, I take care of that. And then I wipe down the container. And it keeps everything really organized, but it also contains any spills. And it sort of acts like a drawer. So I can grab that, pull it out, and then access things that are in the back. Instead of having to you know, pull a bunch of things out of the refrigerator, I can see what we have. It just is a great system and I highly recommend it. They even make cleaning easier, as you can see. I can just pull out the bins and it's only a couple of things on the shelf that I have to remove. Then I can wipe down the shelf and it makes the job a lot faster. You may have noticed my new apron. I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot of questions about it. It was a gift from my friend Denise and it comes from her company, Apron Diva. I absolutely love it. She picked out the perfect apron for me. It fits great. I love the material and the color. It's got three pockets. I could go on and on. You're probably gonna see me wear it a lot in my videos. And if you are interested in checking out this apron or the other ones that she has in her online store, I will have the information for that down in the description box, along with her YouTube channel called This and That with Denise Jordan.
Usually I will just take the contents out of the drawer and then wipe them down really well without removing them. But every couple of months I do like to take them out because as you can see, a lot of little crumbs and other debris fall down in between the drawers and the only way to access that is to remove the drawers. like to use my handheld vacuum to get a lot of these crumbs. It helps me access the back of the refrigerator really easily and it saves me a lot of time. I don't have to keep rinsing my rag and repeating over and over. like keeping produce in plastic bags for very long. I feel like it makes things go bad quicker. So I'm getting the carrots out and I noticed that there were a few limes that were sort of going bad. So I wanted to get those out of there so that they don't spoil the others. I also prefer to prep things like the kale that you see on the countertop there, but this week I just haven't had a chance so far. We're going to use it in the next day or so, so I'm going to keep on top of it. But in the meantime, I have to hurry because I need to pick up Peyton and I really wanted to finish this job. And you can see how I get frustrated with the drawers and don't always take them out. <laughs> They're not the easiest to put back in, at least the lower ones, but I always win in the end and usually it works better when I'm not in a rush. So it's actually the next day before I was able to complete cleaning the refrigerator, which isn't really that big of a deal. And another reason why I really like to do it shelf by shelf, because if I took everything out of the refrigerator and then ran out of time, it would be a much bigger problem. But doing it shelf by shelf allows me to stop if I need to, and then just pick up later when I have the time. So Patrick is going to pick up the groceries on his way home from taking Peyton this morning. So I want to knock this out and have it done before he gets here.
and I finished just in time. <laughs> the groceries have arrived, so now I can focus on putting those away. And as you can see, it's a small grocery haul, so I won't go into everything that we got, but I'm going to put as many of the cold things away in our refrigerator here as I like, and I like to keep this refrigerator not too stuffed full. <laughs> we have a spare refrigerator in our laundry room, which really helps for overflow, and that way this one doesn't get too overcrowded. Plus, as I mentioned, I'm planning on hitting a couple other stores in the next day or so to fill in, especially with the produce. So those drawers are still looking a little bit empty. Patrick and I are eating breakfast really late this morning, so I'm grabbing the last grapefruit. We love having grapefruit along with our breakfast, and I have a grapefruit knife that I got years ago from Pampered Chef. I imagine you can probably find one on Amazon, but these really speed up the process and make eating grapefruit really nice. <laughs> this grapefruit doesn't look super pretty. It's not all pink and you know pretty, but this one really tasted great. It was juicy juicy and delicious and we just love our grapefruit. love having an organized refrigerator, but even more importantly, a clean one. I can really see the difference when I do this. It's such a pleasure to open the door each time and see it this way. If you keep on top of it and do it regularly and do it when it's not full, it only takes 15 or 20 minutes. I promised you some meal prep and I have some great ideas from this new cookbook called Cook Once. This is by Cassie Joy Garcia. She's the author of the Cook Once Eat All Week cookbook that I've showed you guys before. She very graciously sent me an advanced copy and it's on sale now, so I'm gonna have it in my Amazon store if you guys wanna check it out. Or you can check your local library to try it out and see if it works for your family. So far, I am loving it, and I think this concept is even easier and a little less daunting than her previous book because it basically covers two meals. So in the one that I tried out, I just made some extra chicken when I was making the first meal, and then that chicken I used in the second one. So it's not an all-out batch cooking day or anything like that. It's totally doable, and this is really how I cook naturally anyway. So I love this idea. It helps me think through, you know, a couple of recipes at a time when I'm doing my meal planning. And these were tremendous hits and I cannot emphasize that enough. My family went completely bonkers <laughs> over both of these recipes that I'm gonna show you. Meal one is buffalo zucchini boats with ranch roasted potatoes. So I'm prepping the potatoes right now. Just use a pound of potatoes cut into half inch pieces. I'm using Yukon Gold. I think the recipe calls for red. These came out great. And then just stir in a quarter cup of ranch dressing, a little bit of sea salt and ground black pepper. And then you spread it out on a baking sheet and bake while you prep the rest of the meal. The potatoes take about 45 minutes at 350 degrees, and while they are baking, I'm prepping the zucchini boats. And so I'm just cutting zucchini in half lengthwise, and then I'm scooping out the seeds and making room for the filling. Then in my 
my skillet, I'm just going to brown up three pounds of ground chicken. And so this is going to be used for tonight's meal and also for a meal later in the week. When the chicken is crumbled and fully cooked through, you can transfer half of it into an airtight container and refrigerate it to use for the second meal. And so that will keep for up to five days, so you're not obligated to eat another chicken dish right away. To the hot chicken in the skillet, I add a half a stick of salted butter and let that melt. And then I pour in about a half a cup of Frank's red hot sauce or another hot sauce of your choice. And I find this Frank's one to be just the perfect amount of heat, not too spicy. And I also eyeball it. So it's probably a little bit less than a half a cup. I wanted to break the chicken down just a little bit more and also this helped incorporate the butter and get that nice and melted. I have this tool in my Amazon store and I find that I use it so often for ground beef and for a lot of other things too. Once the chicken's ready, you can scoop it into the bowl of the zucchini boats and I just arrange those cut side up in a couple of baking dishes. Bake them for 25 minutes in a 350 degree oven or until the zucchini has released its juices and the chicken is slightly crispy. I also chopped up some cilantro while they were baking and then I divide them up. I think two per person worked out really well. I drizzled some ranch dressing over top of each and then topped it with a little bit of the cilantro and served the ranch potatoes on the side. When my cookbook arrived and I was looking through all of the yummy recipes, Patrick was looking over my shoulder and he pointed at this one and said, that looks really good. So I started with this recipe for that reason. They taste as good as they look and I love that there was enough to have leftovers for lunch the next day. Meal two is Alfredo chicken lasagna. To make the Alfredo sauce, in a small saucepan, melt a half a stick of butter, one cup of whole milk, two cups of heavy cream, one and a half cups of grated Parmesan cheese, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, and then about one and a half teaspoons of fine sea salt, and about a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Bring the sauce to a simmer over medium heat and cook whisking until the Parmesan has completely melted and the sauce is well combined. And then you'll want to remove it from the heat and set it aside. you'll need 12 ounces of frozen spinach that has been thawed and drained and I squeeze mine really dry and then I added about 15 ounces of cottage cheese she calls for ricotta cheese I think it just depends on what you prefer in your lasagna add a little bit more salt and pepper to taste mix well and then set that aside Now for my favorite part, or the fun part, <laughs> assembling the lasagna. Just spread about a half a cup of the sauce evenly over the bottom of a 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Place a layer of the lasagna noodles over the sauce and then spread half of the cheese mixture over the noodles. Top evenly with half of the chicken and then pour one cup of the sauce over the chicken. 
add a second layer of noodles, the remaining ricotta, and the remaining chicken, and the rest of the sauce, and then finally sprinkle the top evenly with mozzarella cheese. I love that her recipe calls for no boil lasagna noodles and I use gluten free, but this just skips that whole step of having to cook the noodles in advance and it came out great. Cover the baking dish with aluminum foil and bake for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. Then remove the foil and bake for another 10 to 15 minutes more until the noodles are soft and the sauce is bubbling. I actually put the broiler on for two minutes to get that really golden crust on top. I love that and then just let it cool for a few minutes before serving. My family absolutely loved this lasagna and I did too. It was very different from any lasagna I'd made before and I will definitely make this and the zucchini boats again. I love that it makes six very generous portions. I served it with a little side salad and it was just right. I hope you enjoyed these recipes and the video today. If you did, give me a thumbs up and share it with a friend that you think might be interested. Also, don't leave without subscribing if you haven't already done so. We'd love to have you join us here at Faith and Flower. Thank you for spending your time with me here today. I can't wait to talk with you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.